Hey guys, it's Jacqueline. So today I have a very special guest with me. I've got Lauren Toyota. Hello. You may know her from her channel, Lauren Toyota, or Hot for Food. She does amazing vegan cooking, and we actually just did a video over on her channel. We did. So I will put a link to it down below, so make sure you check that out. But today I wanted to have her on my channel because I think she's got a really awesome like viewpoint on not just veganism, but life. Thanks. She has a bunch of really awesome like chatty videos, so you can check down below and check out her other ones. Um, but I have some questions from you guys and some topics that I wanted to cover. So I think we might as well hop on into it. Yeah, well I love talking, so glad to be here. <laughs> It'll be good, I'm excited. Not only, like I was saying on your video, I, yeah. I'm excited to do this not only to like talk to you guys, but also for my own personal like... Because you're figuring things out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it'll be helpful for me. So I'm super excited for this. Okay, so the first question that I kind of want to cover is being vegan and not being vegan enough. Now, I know I watched a video on your channel and you said this really awesome. Was it you that said the quote that you're not going to be vegan enough for vegans and you're always going to be... Like, you're never going to be vegan enough for the non vegan I don't know if I said Am that. Am I saying that better? I never remember what I say. <laughs> well, I heard someone say something along the lines. Yeah. You're always going to be too vegan for the non-vegans and not vegan enough for the vegans. Yeah, I don't think I said that, but that is a very good quote. Whoever said that, good on you. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think it's a really interesting topic um, because I've been dealing, not dealing with something, but I've been kind of exploring and trying to figure out what I want to do in terms of not only like, I mean, obviously what I eat, but in my lifestyle as well. Yeah, with every aspect of the vegan lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So for the first, I've been vegan for almost three years, for three years now, if you didn't know that. And um, for the first kind of two-ish years, I think I just focused mainly on like what I was eating and it was mainly just a big diet change. And that was like a big deal to me and I was like, I'm doing it, I'm vegan, right? Yeah. Um, and I felt really great and I loved it. And then the more I kind of, I guess, researched into veganism and learned about it, I kind of, I guess, realized I'm like, oh, there's so many other aspects of my life that I can transfer this over into. And then I started to really get into like learning about cruelty-free products and like ethical buying and all that type of stuff. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, Kind of struggling not only like obviously on a personal level i can be like okay you know i'm not gonna buy i'm gonna buy cruelty free makeup yeah. for myself like that's no big deal but then also if you guys don't know i do makeup professionally and i'm kind of at a point where i'm like it's hard because obviously i would ideally want my kit to be cruelty free as well but there's products that are industry standard like mac is a really common one yeah makeup forever and sometimes you need those products so I feel like I'm kind of afraid sometimes to put that label on myself, like I'm gonna go cruelty free, just because I'm not sure if I can in every aspect of my life. Like yeah. personally, it seems cool. But then working in the entertainment industry or doing film and TV and doing makeup, I just don't, I guess I just don't wanna be like a hypocrite. Like I don't yeah, I, wanna make that definitive statement, you know? It's super tough and it's a very individual decision to make and nobody should be telling you well, if you're a vegan, then you shouldn't be using all. You shouldn't be using Mac at all ever on your clients or something like that. Yeah. I would have guessed that right now you have a shit ton of makeup. Yes. Yeah. A little and, too much. And I mean, personally, I don't. It's very hard. I actually think the makeup artist thing is kind of like a tough one. Because mm. um, there are cruelty-free makeup artists. Like, mm -hmm. if I wanted to go, if I, I was doing a commercial shoot, I could hire this girl. There's a few girls I know. I think some of them are based in New York. There might even be one in Toronto, and they're like cruelty-free makeup artists. Yeah. Cool. Good for them. They've gotten to that level. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that that should be necessarily your ultimate end goal if yeah. it's not really how you feel. And I feel like it's fine to just take those baby steps where you are right now and like improve a little more and improve mm -hmm. a little more so you yourself don't put um, non-cruelty free, non-vegan makeup on your face. Yeah. But maybe your kit, you're not gonna throw all that out. Well, that's where I'm at right now. Like, obviously, I mean, I, you're not. Why would you do that? Do <laughs> well, obviously like the stuff I got, like obviously I have way too much makeup. Um, and I told myself like, I'm just gonna use the products obviously that I have and use them up. And then when it comes time to buy new ones, I'm obviously gonna look into the cruelty free alternatives, but it's more for my like, I guess I'm just more, I don't know if I'm afraid to put it out there. Not that I'm afraid, but I just don't want to be hypocritical, I guess. You don't wanna be hypocritical, but you also, if you come out and say, this is why I didn't come out of the vegan closet for so long, because the second <laughs> you say you're vegan, yeah. then you're questioned about everything you do. Mm -hmm. Like you have to meet some certain standard and I just want that to go away. Yeah. If you're vegan three times a week, that's better than never eating vegan. Mm -hmm. So you should, you know, congratulate yourself on making that small mm -hmm. change. And I congratulate you for making that small change if you're mm -hmm. doing that. And I just feel like people need to get off the pot and get off their high horse about whatever this like <laughs> vegan perfectionism is. Like doing a little 
little bit better yeah. each and every day for mm -hmm. the rest of your life is a great way to exist. Yeah. You, no one's perfect. You're never going to mm -hmm. be perfect. You're never going to cover off all your bases and check off all the check marks. And I don't get where this this um, this high standard comes from. Well, I think I know a lot of it, like myself. I've seen a lot of, I guess, more of the online vegan community. I think over the past like year or so, like, it's really grown. But there has been, you know, those vegan extremists, and there's been those people that take it to the next level. Which again, I think is good. I mean, it's coming from a place of like passion, and they're obviously like sure, yeah. passionate about it, which is cool. But it's, I think that like when people start. I guess policing other yeah. people. It's like that's not your job. You're yeah, not to police the world. Like, and I think that's why I've been like so hesitant to kind of put it out there. Cause I'm like, I just want to. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't want to cause controversy. Like I'm not trying to do that. I know. Mm -hmm. And then people will argue, well, how are you making any change to the bigger picture if mm -hmm. you're not causing controversy? You're trying to get people, encourage people to, to make changes in their yeah. life. Yeah. But I think that there's a more um, palatable way to inspire people mm -hmm. and encourage people to make positive changes, whether that's eliminating meat, dairy, and eggs out of their diet, or maybe just eliminating meat out of their diet for the first few months. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like, it's like, be the kind of like inspiration, like give people the nudges and empower people to make mm -hmm. their own decisions. And just at the end of the day, just let people do what they mm -hmm. want to a degree now. A lot of people disagree with me because they want to fight that vegan fight and they want everyone yeah. to be vegan and they want everyone to get that animal slaughter is murder and all of these things. And I believe in all of these things, but I don't need to go around. It doesn't do me any personal value to my, to who I am and to my mm -hmm. energy and, and all that to go around being that way. Exactly. I feel like that's a lot of exhaustive energy putting it out to someone else instead of focusing on me. And I mm -hmm. do really think you have to focus on yourself and what, you believe in and stand by what you believe in and stand by your truth and, and kind of leave everyone else alone. Yeah. So you're on a journey right now trying to figure these things out. I don't, you're going to feel the pressure from the people, but I feel like you should start trying to ignore it. Yeah. Because you're doing all the right things right now mm -hmm. as you are. And if you didn't make any more changes, you're still doing a lot more than a lot of other people. Yeah. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I think too, it might be more of like a personal thing too. Like I'm a very like, I guess more black or white person. Like I'm either this or I'm that. And like, I feel like if I don't go into it a hundred percent, I feel, I don't know if it's like a sense of guilt. I mean, obviously I'm aware of things going on and I want to, and even like speaking about clothing, we haven't even gotten into that, but like buying obviously like non-leather yeah. products, non-suede, but then on top of that, like ethical buying, are you yeah. buying from places yeah. that run sweatshops and all that stuff? I mean, it can extend, it can extend to so many different areas of your life. And I feel like it's almost like this big daunting thing that I want to be 100% perfect at, but now I'm afraid to go into it because I don't want to, I don't know, I just feel like I'm I, no. not going to ever be doing enough, so I feel almost intimidated by the idea of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's like this weird thing that I'm dealing with, and I'm like, am I I get what you're feeling, but I think you also have to, you have, you have to um, not be so hard on yourself. Mm. I think that's the first step is not being so hard on yourself yeah. because I totally get your mentality of wanting to go full in 100%. Yeah. Because I was like that. But I realized early on that having that mentality was too much pressure. Like you said, it's like that fear of failure so you don't do anything yeah. at all. And that's not good. So mm -hmm. rather than putting all that pressure on yourself to like be perfect and do it 100% and be accountable and non-hypocritical in every single aspect of your life, like you just have to chip away and you're chipping away and you're three years in at being vegan so you've like seen the light, which I always say. And now you're working <laughs> towards like, you know, doing better in other ways and like mm -hmm. it took me a long time for i'm the same as you the first two years was just about food mm -hmm. it was about nothing else i didn't bother looking in, into whether my products were tested on animals yeah. or the ingredients like cosmetics and, mm -hmm. and things like that and then all of those layers started coming off afterward and i started exploring that and same with like i was still um wearing leather shoes and mm -hmm. wearing leather clothes and buying leather shoes yeah. up until um two or three years ago now and like I still have leather shoes and I still wear them sometimes, yeah. but I'm not purchasing any new leather. Yeah. And again, I don't, no one can sit there and be like, that's wrong. It's just like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do, but that's what I'm doing. And it's mm -hmm. fine because I'm still a fucking vegan, which is mm -hmm. basically at the end of the day, like get, people lately like to criticize me because they don't, again, they say I'm not vegan enough. Yeah. I'm like, I'm fucking vegan. I just said <laughs> in a recent video, it's like, you can't call me not vegan. Yeah. Like I am like, mm -hmm. and I identify with that and I am, and I'm practicing it in all different ways. But if there's just there's no there's not a rule book other than yeah. like try to limit your your use of mm -hmm. animals like in your diet 100% and work at the other things because it is too overwhelming to do it all at once. So 
I would just say to make it a simple answer is like stop putting that much pressure on yourself because it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I also think that that internal feeling you're having is just being reflected back at you by everyone that's watching you. Mm -hmm. So you True. need to also be a little more, um, mm, you need to stand by what it is that you're at, where you're at right now and just yeah. be honest about that and just live yeah. with that for now. It's not gonna be that way mm -hmm. in a month, two months, two years, three years from now because you're gonna evolve. But right now, this is how you feel and you might as well just be honest about it yeah. and not feel afraid to say it mm -hmm. because who cares what they say? Yeah, well I think too, one thing, like maybe it's like more of a mental block like with myself. Like I feel like, obviously we're all, always growing and yeah. changing and for me, I think, I feel like if I'm not 100% right now, then I'm never going to be and I can't, grasp the concept that I can slowly happen over time and that's something that I'm struggling with like even I think it's been about maybe almost eight months a year and I just I've not I haven't purchased any like leather cool. or anything yeah. and no um, non-vegan non cruelty free makeup or mm -hmm. yeah non-vegan makeup um, just because I'm personally at a place where I'm like I don't know how I feel so I'm just not gonna do anything I just haven't bought anything um, but then it's a question that I start to think about like for the future okay is this really sustainable just to avoid buying anything um, and especially like from a more I guess kind of career thing going back, going back to the whole makeup thing mm -hmm. um, I was talking to you like sometimes I'll get approached by really big influential companies which I mean yeah they make great products but no they're not cruelty free so I just I've turned down opportunities mm -hmm. because I'm at a place where I'm like I don't know how I feel so I'm just no for now but then I wonder would it be more influential if I work with that company and then maybe down the road when I've been working with them for a while and my opinion can be more valid to them and be like, hey, I and think you'll it, help them go cruelty free. Yeah, so I do wonder all those things. I'm just at a point where I've just been like, I'm so confused. I'm not sure what I should be doing or what I want to be doing. So I've just been like avoiding everything. Like that's where I'm at, which is like a weird place to be. I completely know what you're talking about when it comes to the brand thing because I deal with this on a daily basis mm -hmm. and I turn down a lot of things and I have that same question run through my head well is if I do work with this brand maybe I can help develop a bigger line of vegan products yeah. for them and I have these lofty what seem like pipe dreams like mm -hmm. yeah sure this big corporation is going to let you but develop you never know you never know but do I feel comfortable right now investing in that mm -hmm. in the cases that I've thought about this no so I don't do the deal because I'm like no it's it's too big of a thing I can be more effective in other places. Yeah. This, this is not where my message will be most effective right now. So when I'm thinking about, when I thought about that question more recently with certain offers, I just think, is me doing this and investing time and money into this going to be effective? And mm -hmm. the answer is usually no. Like I think I can be more effective doing other things with my message about veganism and whatever. So I've, I've turned those down. I still think that's a valid point to make is like long-term vision, big picture is, yeah, eventually a lot of these cosmetic companies are going to need to go cruelty free and yeah. I do think we're making waves with the um, regulations and laws and stuff like that. I work with the Humane Society International on the campaigning of cruelty free yeah. products and things like that and changing the um, legal system in Canada and in China and all that stuff. Okay. So I've been basically now it come up publicly that I support these changes yeah. and so I don't, I, I'm not going to promote companies that test on animals like I've been mm -hmm. approached by Clinique and Motrin and all types of things mm -hmm. to talk about women and being an entrepreneur and yeah. being an aspirational person not even to talk about the products but it was sponsored by those products and i said unfortunately i love their message but then there's this other message that i can't support yeah. so i can't do it well, and i'm hopeful that if i say no the right brand will come along in which i can talk about the same message but they're also the right ethical cruelty free brand exactly and i think it is good from like from a standpoint of being held accountable like it's not that I'm afraid to be held accountable because um, I do think that's important if you you know have a belief I think it's important to stick to it um, but I think too it's important in those opportunities like I know what I've done when I've had some really exciting and big opportunities come to me I've been like hey honestly like this sounds really awesome and it's not that I don't like your products but I don't support that you sell in China which you have to if you if you're not familiar you have to um, conduct animal testing mm -hmm. so I think it's important to, I mean, at the point where I'm at, I think it's important to let them know why I'm not yeah, interested. Because, mm -hmm. So that way they have, okay, you know what, all these people don't want to work with us because we're that's not a free. I and think then, that's a bigger message than the long term of partnering with them, taking their money now, yeah. and then kind of hopefully wishing that they'll make the changes. But they won't make the changes if 
you're encouraging people to buy their products. And yeah. if people keep buying their products, they're not going to make the changes. Change. Exactly. So you saying no is more effective than you saying yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Again, you can do what you want. Yeah. I know people that are still dealing with this same issue yeah. and they haven't quite drawn the line yet. Mm -hmm. But I think when you say I don't know what my I don't know how I feel, so I'm not I'm just not doing anything, that's not true. You do know how you feel. Yeah. You are saying no. And you just have to keep doing it more and more and yeah. trust that there are the right partnerships for you out there because there are, because mm -hmm. there's hundreds of cruelty-free cosmetic brands. Exactly. And they have been super supportive. I want yeah. to put them in there. Everyone that I have worked with has been so awesome. Sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, so I think it's just doing it more to reinforce your belief yeah. in your truth and where you stand. And then those things will come to you. because mm -hmm. they. But, but if you keep denying or it's almost like... I always bring it back to these like beliefs and these spiritual beliefs that you yeah. have or these inherent core beliefs you have because if you keep saying yes to L'Oreal, let's say it's L'Oreal. Yeah. If you said yes to L'Oreal and you said yes to L'Oreal, it's like you believe there aren't the right partners out there. Yeah. But you saying yes. You're like, well, I have to take this L'Oreal thing because it's the only job. It's the only way I can make money. True. Instead of believing, no, there are other partners out there that I can work with. Yeah. And so I'm saying no to L'Oreal because I don't believe in what they their practices mm -hmm. and I believe that the right thing will come along. So I've had to really True. work at that and I do that. Now. Yeah, I think it's putting your trust in that. And I think that's why I am kind of struggling because I'm questioning everything. I'm like, oh, did I make the right decision by not doing this or by not doing this? And I think, I mean, I think ultimately, like you said, like you do know right away, deep down, if it's what you want to do and what you want to go forward with. But then I think long term, that's when I start questioning. Oh, what if I I did take that opportunity? Like you start thinking. Yeah, thinking is not helpful. Actually, mm -hmm. it starts spiraling you into doubting your true self. Mm -hmm. Like. I told you this off camera, but it's true. Every time I get an offer or a call or some type of thing that someone wants me to do, I immediately either go, ugh, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Like I have this gut feeling that's just like, don't do it. But then if I ignore that quickly and start thinking, oh, but it's this amount of money and then maybe it fits into my schedule. Mm -hmm. and then, then, then That's when you start getting and spiraling mm -hmm. out of control and you don't, but you already had your answer. Yeah. And other times it's a super easy, like, yeah, this so makes sense. I don't need to even do any research. I know this brand. I yeah. get it. This makes sense. This is what I believe in. And it's a super easy yes. And, and it feels so right when that happens It feels good. Too. It's like, that's all you ever have to do. Yeah. It's like, it's actually a very, it seems hard, but it's actually so easy to do. Yeah. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And you're already doing it, so you're already on your way there. You're like, you're right there, you're doing it. Yeah, well, it's honestly, it is really comforting just to like hear a different viewpoint on it because, like I said, I feel like there are super saturated certain mm -hmm. viewpoints of veganism and like people being very full on and extreme. Um, and actually, I did want to talk about a little bit more of like comments people sure. will say and just kind of like talk about that extreme veganness, which Again, I think it comes from a place of passion, which is cool, but like sometimes I think it's important to, I don't know, go about it in a positive way. Um, well, but and not be so judgmental. Like, yeah. Judging other people, whether they're vegan or not vegan, whatever, is like so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's this weird thing, especially because, I mean, the core like belief of veganism is compassion and you know, being kind. Like That's what veganism is to me, right? And I just find it so weird when some people are... So, I guess, I don't know if the mm -hmm. online bullying is the right term to say, or like people will attack other yeah. people, and I'm like, we're all just trying to, to live, and I don't, I don't really understand why people um, mm -hmm. are so adamant about, I mean, obviously I understand why people are so adamant about like animal rights and stuff, but it's like when you're not even being, treating humans I know. the right way. I have a real problem with that. Yeah, it, that's when I kind of, it, it doesn't fall in line with what I think. Um, should be how people should be acting. Just in general, whether you're vegan or not, I mean, I think everyone should be treating everyone with compassion and mm -hmm. being a good person. That, that's I mean, I even me. get a bit feisty and I reply back to people or mm -hmm. I'd be sarcastic and I'm not, oh, being, so I'm not being very nice replying back either. However, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Sometimes I just, sometimes you just. <laughs> well, also too, like you can stand up for yourself. That's yeah. not an issue, but I yeah. think when people attack unnecessarily and yeah. judge. So do you have any um, examples? So I, yeah, I had some yeah. comments that I screenshot and wrote down. So one comment I got the other day actually, it was really bizarre. I mean, for the most part, you guys are normally really great. I think it's more people that stumble upon these videos and leave their comments. Well, there's a bunch of trolls. There are. It's the <laughs> internet. I get that. Um, but someone left a comment the other day and they were criticizing me and they left a couple of comments saying, how dare you like Zoella's Instagram photo? She's holding ice cream in it. That's not vegan, blah, blah, blah. And they went on and they're like, you're being a fake vegan or something. And I was like, I can appreciate a photo without wanting to consume the How food. did they even know you liked Zoella's I know. I was like, you must have went back and like, I don't know. I don't know. Do you how know how many non-vegan food photos I like every day? Yeah, it's 
it's a, it was a weird like comment from someone, but I have gotten that a few times, like, oh, how can you like that photo? Or that's another thing I want to get into. How can you be friends with people that aren't vegan? Okay, well that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I'm about. I'm not better than anyone because they're they aren't vegan or because they are vegan. I I don't care. How can you be friends with someone who isn't vegan? Yeah. Even people. These are real questions. No one comments. said that to me, but they say so. No one's ever said how could you be friends with someone. Mm -hmm. They say how do you deal with your friends who mm -hmm. aren't vegan? Like how do you feel about them? They yeah. want me to talk about it. Yeah. So do you reply to these people or no, are you I mean, I really, like, what should I do about this? Not even. I don't Want to talk about it. I mean, I don't. I see comments and you just scroll by, whatever. But I'm just. I guess I'm more curious. If people actually feel this way, or there there are people like actually out there that are so extreme vegan that they're like, I can't be friends with anyone else. And like, I don't know. To okay. me, that just seems like crazy. But I have this real issue with. Okay, we know that animal slaughter and mm. killing animals for food is sad and miser. And it's an awful thing to witness. It's an. It's um. You know, surrounding yourself with horrible imagery like mm -hmm. that constantly is not good for you. Oh, true. So I have a real issue with certain people. That I'm not. I don't. Not anyone specifically, but there are people that I've come across who like to really focus in on the cruelty aspect mm. of the vegan movement, mm -hmm. and they're constantly just like, how how does focusing that. on that help mm -hmm. you and your mentality yeah. and your you know what I mean? Or someone will be like, say, eating a hot dog, like a, a non-vegan hot dog, um, and someone will like show photos and be like, oh, this is what you're eating. I'm like, how does putting that negative energy and throwing it in someone's face, like that's not going to yeah, get anything. That's why that's, I've no taken point. the route of promoting vegan food because I feel like it's a it's an enjoyable, pleasant yeah. thing that starts to seep into your mind to mm -hmm. change the way you think. And I think sometimes... It's just not as easy to go that super direct extreme route of like, look at this murder, look at this cruelty, yeah. look at this murder, look at this cruelty. Doesn't that make you want to change? It's like, no, it that makes, makes me feel, feel guilty terrible. And, yeah. and I just think if, if you're going to stand up for that stuff, I'm not saying don't do activism or don't look at that stuff or don't mm -hmm. use examples. I think those examples can be strong and impactful for certain people, but not for everybody. And I, um, what I'm trying to say is... The people that like to be, they're cut, they're miserable vegans because they're focusing on the miserable aspects yeah. of why people are vegan. And so they're spreading that misery and they're, yeah. they're judging you. They're throwing out all these questions like, what a miserable life. Why are you not friends with someone? I mean, why are you friends with someone who's not vegan? Well, you're just going to be <laughs> friends with vegans. You're going to... There's well, so much more to well, good for you. You know what? Well, good just... for you if all your friends are vegan and you made them all <laughs> vegan. Good for you. But like, my existence would be miserable if I said, "See ya, everybody." I would have like two friends, I think. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I don't want to hang out with vegans all the time because literally all you talk about is fucking vegan stuff, and it's annoying. <laughs> like, I don't want it. I don't want to hang out with yeah. vegans all the time, to be quite honest. So, um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's my answer. That's your, your thoughts on vegans that. Vegans are annoying, and I don't want to hang out with them all the time. <laughs> But like some vegans are not annoying, <laughs> but some True. are, and I don't want to go yeah. to only vegan events and hang out with only vegan people mm -hmm. and talk about all this shit all the time because mm -hmm. that's not it's not enjoyable to me. You have to yeah. do what you like, and it doesn't mean that you uh, just. Well, life revolves so much like around so many it's other stressful. aspects. It's I know, stressful. I know. It shouldn't be this thing. But it's it shouldn't be thing. stressful like this. It's not stressful. Mm -hmm. Like okay, going back to another crazy comment, yeah. which I have gotten a couple of times. I, you know, do vlogs and I've traveled and, and done some videos on that. And I've had people comment, oh my god, you claim you're vegan. How can you go on a plane that's so bad for the environment? Things oh, like that. Oh, god. <laughs> and it's like, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. Yes, maybe planes are the best thing for the environment. But also, I'm not going to inhibit my life and not do things in my life just because they're having a negative impact. I mean, obviously, I'm a human. I'm going to have a negative impact from just existing. Yeah. It's just to try to reduce that in, in oh, ways. But it doesn't make sense. I know. First of all, but these are real comments. This is what you should this. reply to this person specifically: is by not eating meat, like go get those facts yeah, from the UN all those up. and say, by not eating yeah. meat, I've saved this much yeah. water and in this many mm -hmm. carbon emissions from entering the universe. Um, and so, me going on a plane actually is quite insignificant yeah. to the three years that I've not eaten animal products. Mm -hmm. And so, fuck you. <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. That's so ridiculous. Well, I always think like, cause you get this question of going kind of back to that whole extreme vegan thing. Like, well, when is it ever enough? People are going to say, oh, well, when you go outside and go on this or do this, it's having a bad impact or it's killing uh, bugs or whatever. <laughs> and people will just always go that one step further. And I think that 
you should strive to live a happy life and not something that's stressful to go out and do things or not do things because you're afraid of going in a car that's got that's bad for the environment versus mm -hmm. biking and like we have to live a life have, we're here we're, yeah you know, we're freaking here we asked to be here for some mm -hmm. reason and we're figuring it out and at the end of the day the most important thing is that you actually are happy and yeah. are enjoying your life and doing things you want to do and I want to be vegan yeah because it makes me feel better physically emotionally and spiritually and going on a, I don't feel guilty going on a plane <laughs> I don't. Yeah. If you just think about how much you are affecting the envir environment by just changing the way you eat, part of me is like, leave me the hell alone because <laughs> I've made way more of an impact yeah. than you who's still eating meat and animal products. And I think so it, you're eating animal products and going on a plane, that's double the impact of what I'm doing. So it's like, who cares? And I think it's going back to that whole <laughs> thing of like, it shouldn't be something that's stressful. Like being vegan or like eating plant based or leaving or leading a vegan lifestyle. It shouldn't be something that's stressful in this like. It makes you feel guilty. Yeah. It shouldn't make you feel guilty for other things, which I think it does for some reason for a lot of mm -hmm. people. And we really got to get back to. Well, at the end of the day, it just comes back to getting back to you and like yeah. what's good for you and screw all the other people. True said. True word. I just can't say screw everyone else and because <laughs> really. It also has become more of my mantra because when you put yourself out there on YouTube, again, you're putting yourself out there, you're speaking for a lot of people, you're, you're helping a lot of people by yeah. just saying what you want to say and putting it out on the internet um, and taking liberties by doing that. And I think once you put yourself out there, you open yourself up to a lot of criticism and then you have to mm -hmm. learn how to also quiet that criticism and quiet all that noise. Yeah. I, you know, we've chosen to do this for a higher reason, I think, because what we share helps other people. And that's all we have to remember to focus on every day. Not that I'm like, we're not fucking holy and super special because <laughs> we're doing this. I'm just saying like, I just try to remember the impact that I've had on yeah. like one girl's life who's like, now I'm vegan and I'm like, cool. Like, and just, and just like quiet all that other stuff because well, someone's always going to say that you're not doing enough and people are always going to criticize. And you're never good enough. And like, we all believe we're not good enough on a spiritual level. We don't need to be told by everyone else that we're not good enough because of the way we eat and what products we buy and everything else. Like mm -hmm. we need to start working on healing ourselves because we are good enough doing whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. And everyone's on their own journey and not everyone's vegan yet. And that's fine. I think that's something else. They're also good enough. They're not terrible, horrible people that deserve to die because they eat meat. Exactly. Like, that's so, like, such an insane thing to There's say. There's no reason to shame other people. Yeah. Like, it's not, I think people think it's, like, some exclusive, like, club thing. And if you're not a part of it, like, you're not cool or good enough or a good person, which is, it's not the case at all. Some people may think that and say that. That is not what I believe. It's no. not, it shouldn't be that way at all. And... I think a lot of people can be intimidated too by the idea of going vegan because it, it seems like there's all this added baggage and stuff, yeah. which it really doesn't need to be. And I think you said it best, just ignore, I guess, what other people are saying and all their criticisms and just do you. Yeah. And seek out those positive influences because there are people in the, in your community that you'll meet in your community, new friends you might make, make in the vegan community that will, um, you'll resonate with what they believe and what they say. and like. Together, if we all just keep, I don't know, if we all just keep talking about this and, and sharing our opinions, I feel like there are a lot of waves being made in the movement. And yeah. ev but everyone's necessary. I always say that. All yeah. the extremists and the vegan police, you're also necessary. But am I going to let you bother me and bring me down? No. But you're necessary. You're doing good work as well. Everyone's doing fine. Everything's good. <laughs> I know. That was the perfect way to wrap it up. Well, thanks so much yeah. for being on my channel. This was fun. Thank you for hanging so out in my, my little quiet room. Uh, you guys will understand, she has the cutest space here ever. You can't even see all the plants that we're surrounded with. It's such a beautiful space. But no, I'm so, <laughs> there we go. It got cut out of frame. Um, but no, honestly, this was such a great conversation and I think it was something that I really wanted to have with you guys and hearing your advice because you definitely are someone like I look up to Thanks. and that I really respect like how refreshing your opinion is and your perspective, so. Well, thank you and good for you for putting this out there and talking about it. Just everything. going for and it. This is the start of that journey for you too by like actually putting it out there now and talking about this Well, that's the audience. thing. I think by not saying anything that doesn't achieve anything. Yeah. By at least starting the conversation, I think it's important and I think that it's necessary. Oh, cool. So I really wanted to do this. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like I said, make sure you go over to Lauren's channel, to both of her channels. I will link them down below. And, and see what we made today. Yes. We're, We're going to go eat some food a little bit. It'll be awesome. Yeah. And if you want to learn how to make it, go over to Lauren's channel. Um, but thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.